Welcome back, guys. In the spirit of quarantining, I'm going to make a sanitizer bottle cake. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to trace the bottom of the actual bottle on a piece of cardboard to make our bottom support. And then I'm just going to freehand a little bit inside of that line so that our finished cake bottle is close to the same size as the real one. You want to cut it a bit smaller so that it will account for the buttercream and the modeling chocolate that we'll add back on later. So with a sharp knife, I'm cutting the smaller one out of the two, out of the cardboard. And we're just gonna pop that out and put that to the side for later. The next thing we need is a board to ice the cake on. So I'm cutting out a rectangle, which doesn't need to be huge, but will help with stability when we go to ice the cake. I'm also tracing the face of the bottle on parchment so that we have a size reference when we stack and carve our cake. And I'm doing the same thing for the bottom of the bottle so that we know what shape to cut the pieces to. So I'm just gonna cut that out and set that to the side as well. Now I'm taking a vanilla sheet cake that I baked and I'm just going to cut off a piece that's as wide as my base and then I'm gonna level it off. And before I cut into my cake, I'm going to cut a piece of double-sided tape and stick it on the base to stick it to my icing board. This will help it not slide around when we go to ice it. Side note, I'm only reusing these gloves because I don't like to touch crumbs and I'm going to be the only one eating this cake. Otherwise, I would always use a new pair. You should never reuse gloves because cross-contamination is totally a thing. With that being said, you should also wash your hands in between changing gloves. PSA over, back to the cake. Okay, so now we're gonna begin cutting our layers. So I'm just using the parchment stencil we made to cut out the shapes that we need for the layers. And I'm also gonna go ahead and trim off the brown parts of the cake too, um, so that when we cut into it later, it's all gonna be one color. This is just a preference. You totally don't have to do it, but I like the way it looks at the end, so that's why I'm going to do it. And as I cut my layers, I'm just going to use the face stencil to see where I'm at and estimate how many more layers I'm going to need. So it looks like we need about two to two and a half more layers, so we're just going to cut those out. So once we have those cut out, we're just going to make sure that they all fit on top of each other. That one fits, and here we go with the last one. All right, perfect. So now I'm just going to grab a skewer, which is not only going to be the center support for our cake, but it's also going to hold up the pump piece when we're done making it. So you just want a little bit of buttercream to stick each layer to, or else it's not only going to slide around, but it'll also end up being too tall. And you can even see now with the little bit of buttercream that I have that I'm going to need to trim the top off a bit. So once I do that, I'm just gonna measure the skewer against the real bottle and cut it with some floral stem cutters and center it down my cake. You wanna make sure that it's evenly in the center as well as standing up straight, which might take a little bit of adjusting, um, but then we're gonna ice it. you guys can see as I'm icing it I'm just trying to put a very thin coat just as a crumb coat and I'm trying to keep the shape that I carved into as well I don't want it to be too bulky I just want it to be a glue for the modeling chocolate and now that we're done we're just gonna pop it in the fridge to chill it before we cover it. so now that it's chilled I'm gonna show you a neat trick with a spatula and my handy dandy kitchen torch we're gonna heat up the spatula so that it's a little bit hot that way, when we get to scrape the cake down, it comes off very smooth and even, and we don't risk damaging it by scraping. So I'm just going in and I'm cleaning up all the edges and the sides so that we have a nice, clean cake to cover 
and it's okay if you take a little divot out. Um, you just put that in with some fresh buttercream and you'll be all set. Now we're going to move on to the pump, which we're going to make out of fondant. I don't have any gum paste, which is ideally what I would have liked to use because it dries faster and it's more sturdy. So instead, I'm going to show you another trick. We're going to use white fondant with a little bit of Tylos powder, which is basically a drying and hardening agent. And what it does is it turns the fondant into gum paste if you don't have any because it makes it dry harder and faster. Um, the only downside is that you do have to work fast because it will dry out on you if you don't work fast. So once I knead it together and I get it all smooth, I'm just taking a small piece off the same size as the bottom cap of the pump and rolling it into a log. And then I'm cutting it into a similar height to the cap and rolling it between my palms to shape it. To get the sharp edges, I'm then just going to pinch it between my fingers and roll it on the mat until it's the shape that I want. For the small button on top, I'm just rolling a small ball and flattening it and pinching the sides with my fingers to shape it. Then I just use a small piping tip to cut out the center. To texturize the side like the cap, I'm just using a paring knife to imprint on the fondant cap, just getting the lines as close as I can. And now that it's textured, I'm just going to use some gum glue, which is just a little bit of the Tylos powder and water, and it turns into a goopy glue-like su substance that basically will dry really hard and hold all your decorations in place. To make the neck of the pump, I roll a snake and I'm using a modeling tool to make a crease in the center. Since the real necks, neck of the bottle has a larger part on the side and a skinnier part on the other side. So alternating between rolling the snake with my hands and using the tool, it starts to take shape. Once I'm happy with it, I trim it to size and make sure that it fits on the cap that I made and also check by measuring it against the real bottle. The next part is making these two pieces of threading on the neck that allows you to unlock the pump when you first buy a hand sanitizer. So this is going to be achieved just by rolling a really thin snake with your fingers on the table and trimming it down with the knife. So just really, really thin and then trim it with a knife and then we're going to apply it to our little neck piece with some gum glue. For the nozzle part of the pump, I'm just going to roll out a piece of fondant that tapers from slightly thick to thin, just like the real one. So just roll it out, tapering it on one side, measure it against the bottle to make sure it's long enough. And then what we're going to do is take the actual nozzle and imprint it in the fondant just a little bit so that we have a template so that when we cut it, it's the right size. So I'm just cutting it out with an X-Acto. And then with the modeling tool that I used before for the neck piece, I'm just using the tool to put a little hole in the front where the Purell would come out when you use the pump. Unfortunately, my camera ran out of memory when I was filming this and the rest of the pump and covering of the cake and beginnings of the painting were not filmed, unfortunately. But we're gonna move on to painting nonetheless. So right now I'm painting directly on the modeling chocolate that I covered the cake in. 
But with the cake, if I did it in the studio, ideally I would have wanted the front panel of this to be gum paste. Um, gum paste is a lot easier to paint on than modeling chocolate in my opinion, just for detail work, because modeling chocolate is oil-based. So even with an alcohol-based paint like I'm using, it sometimes beads off um, and it doesn't have as much vibrance as it would as if I'm painting on fondant or gum paste. But for the sake of this video, I just decided to go for it. And the other thing that I would have done was printed all the labels to size on printer paper, and then using an X-Acto, I would have scored the labels into the chocolate or the gum paste so that I had an exact placement and sizing. But for this tutorial and for the sake of time, I decided to freehand it and kind of eyeball where everything goes. And the way I did that was I just put, as you can see in the video, I just put the Purell bottle up against the cake and just copied what I saw. What I'm using for this is called edible art paint, which like I said, is an alcohol based paint. And it was originally formulated to paint on chocolate for cake pops and different things. But it's actually really great to paint on a lot of other things like buttercream and fondant and gum paste and um, royal icing for decorated cookies. So as you can see in the video, because it's not gum paste and I'm painting on chocolate, you do have to go over it sometimes a few different times with the same color just to get it as dark as you need it to be. So once I'm done painting, I just pop the pump on the top of the skewer and now we get to cut it. Thanks so much for watching guys. As always, make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell if you haven't already to check out all the new content we put out as it's posted. Also, if you have any suggestions on other realistic cakes or tutorials you'd like to see, make sure you leave us a comment below. See you next time.